Hello everyone, this is the Southern Hellenist. I am back with another video. So, um, yeah, so I know it's been a little bit since I've done another video. Uh, I kind of wanted to wait until I actually had something that um, I thought was important to talk about before I did a video. And also, I'm kind of like, I've kind of like not been really up to making videos because of my injury and everything. And so I decided to do this video because I kind of want to give you guys one an update on what's going on with me as far as my injury is concerned. And two, uh, something that really fucking pisses me off. Uh, so, uh, the, so the point of the channel, for people who do not know, is to educate, to do education, to kind of vent. <laughs> I need vent. I have 50 subscribers to vent to, so I'm taking advantage of it. Um, so, um, I went to the hospital yesterday, and I got there about 9.48, and I immediately went to the cafeteria, because I was, <laughs> I was hungry, and they had, they had breakfast, but I was like, no, oh, I don't want eggs and sausage. So I ended up getting myself a sandwich, which was really good, and I got myself some ice cream, which was a nightmare to open. I actually had to, this guy actually came along and, like, helped open. Um, <clears throat> at, the e at the hospital, the part of the hospital I was at, I, well, before I went into the hospital, I double masked, because everybody's doing it. <laughs> um, I double masked. Uh, that was, you know, even though I'm fully vaccinated, which the doctors were so <laughs> happy to hear, um, I still do not trust hospitals. So I double masked so that I would be triple protected. So, yeah, the doctors were very happy that I was vaccinated. So, <coughs> yeah. So I go there and get my food, and I eat it. And unlike my job, when we were when we were like certain tables were not available to be used, um, they don't care if you are a family. You're not allowed to sit at the same table. Now, if you are two people, you can sit at a table, but you have to sit like side by side with each other. They have a guy whose who's only job is to ensure that people are abiding by the, you like, the six feet apart thing. So hospitals are really like, this is our, this is our shit, this is our domain, and we are going to do it w the way we want to do it, which I was fine with. The veterans were there. <clears throat> it was Veterans Day yesterday. Hail to all veterans. Um, and, um, yeah, so, uh, they were there, and I thanked them for their service, and I, they were, they were Air Force people, Air Force, members of the Air Force, and I told them that my mother had been in the Air Force, and I had forgotten, um, I had forgotten, uh, how long she had been in the Air Force, which sucks, because normally I'd be like, hey, Mom, how long were you in the Air Force? But now I don't have her to answer that question anymore. So, um, went over to the ER, <clears throat> walked into the ER expecting at least maybe like four or five people. Because last year, <clears throat> um, when I went to the ER, this is back when they were not doing x-rays, um, there was like a whole slew of people. <clears throat> I walked into the ER and the only people that were there was the receptionist, uh, two security guards, and a triage nurse. It was the only people that were in that waiting area. And they were not there to get checked out. They were there to ensure that I was being a good little girl and all that jazz. So I go in there, go to triage. Um, for some unknown, really strange reason, they couldn't find my insurance. I have been here. I was here last year. <laughs> yeah. So, if they send me a bill for like $30,000, I'm going to have to go to my boss and say, hey, yeah, I need this taken care of. Um, 
So, um, I was in there, got in there pretty quickly. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> it took forever for radiology to show up to twist my leg in all these different directions. Um, but they got the x-rays, and I was watching a couple episodes of Supernatural, which was, which, I'm not really a fan of the show, but I'll watch it, because at least Spongebob Squarepants the movie was not on there. <laughs> um, and it's like, it was a very interesting time. I, so I got out about 2.45 close to three, went back to the cafeteria, got myself a cinnamon roll that had these um, pecans on it, which was really good. And uh, and I will tell you something, guys. I want to freaking rant about Lyft. What the fuck is your problem charging me close to $30 to get to the same number of miles that I paid for going to the hospital? Like, okay, look. I am not staying there till five o'clock in the afternoon, waiting on a lower rate. I'm not doing that. I am. I am. I'm exhausted. I want to go home. I end up going back to work. I end up going to my my job, Five Guys, because I wanted to hand send. I wanted to hand deliver the uh, doctor's thing to the manager so that they could get hold of like. The, the general manager and say, hey, Michelle went to the hospital and all the type of stuff. I do not have any kind of um, uh, limitation. Um, I did not break my leg. I did not fracture my leg, which I was very happy about. But I am going to have to go to... So, how it is is that if my pain has not gone away in a week or two, I'm supposed to hit up <laughs> not, I said hit up all oh my lords. Um, I'm supposed to get hold of <clears throat> a orthopedic surgeon, but I'm supposed to be going to a primary care doctor, which I will be getting. <clears throat> um, I'm going to call him up next time I have it off, and I'm going to say, yep. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm going to see him. And he's going to do the recommendation that I go for an MRI. And that will tell them, <clears throat> that, that will give them a much better view of my kneecap than the x-ray did. And if they deem that I need knee surgery, then I will have to get that done. I am not a fan of knee surgery. Uh, I'm going to be out of it through all of it. But I am not a fan of knee surgery because I want to be in a room full of like doctors and nurses. <clears throat> and they're gonna like be cu cutting open my knee and doing stuff inside my kneecap and all that. And then I'm gonna be like, okay, I'm done with this. How's this gonna affect my work? Stuff like that. So I want to finish off getting my mother's cremation bill paid off before I do any kind of surgery so that way I don't have to worry about um, about stuff so much so that's what's been going on as far as yesterday and my leg and all this stuff <clears throat> right now my leg and knee are killing me uh, my brother's I don't have the money to pay for my script so my brother's paying for it um, and uh, I am eternally grateful to him. Um, I'm actually going to go in the living room and make sure that he actually took my script because uh, he's at work. Um, I have it off today because the doctor stated in his paper that I couldn't go back to work until tomorrow. So I'm home. Yay. That's why you got this video. Um, but yeah. So, <clears throat> with that out of the way, I am going to be talking about something that royally, really fucking pisses me off as a polytheist is uh, reading, <laughs> reading, 
or even outside of the outside of the established sources like so what I mean by what I mean by that okay okay what I mean by that Trying to keep your polytheistic religion inside of a bubble. No outside influences. And I'm not talking about Wicca. No, Wicca's not in this video. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, there are people out there in the U.S. that venerate the Norse gods and venerate the Celtic gods. Okay. I'm going to mostly point this towards the Celtic Celtic civilization, a Celtic culture, because they had direct contact with the Greeks and the Romans and the Egyptians. There is a lovely picture. Um, I wouldn't say lovely for comedics because I, I think they kind of cringe at the photo, at the picture of a Celtic warrior standing on top or sideways of a statue of Horus. <clears throat> and you can tell it's Horus because he's wearing the double crown of Egypt. So, one of the things that really royally pisses me off is this <clears throat> belief that if we, if we get rid of the outside influences and oh my lordy, this applies to the Romans as well. <clears throat> Roman pagans. If we go <clears throat> and we get rid of the outside influences that we're practicing a more authentic religion. <clears throat> and I'll tell you something. This was, this is gatekeeping or this is like nimpicking history or whatever you want to call it. To the extreme. <clears throat> so. So, so anyways, um, so yesterday before I left, I poured out a libation to, um, to the gods that are connected with medicine. And I will admit, I will admit, I have a statue of the goddess Air. Now, who is she? Well, she's a Nor she's a Norse goddess. She is one of uh, Frigga's um, handmaids, and she's connected to health, to health, to healing, to medicine, and most importantly, to doctors, physicians, nurses. I'm going to win. Paramedics. She is, that is her domain. That is her realm of influence is the realm of healing and health and medicine and surgeries and all that type of stuff. So she's like, she's in that family of healing or health uh, deities. So you're talking about like uh, for the Egyptians, it would be segment. For Greeks, it would be like Asclepios, Asclepios, Apollo, and Hygiena. And then, of course, in the uh, in the Celtic tradition, it would be Bridget, and in the Norse tradition, it would be the goddess Air. And I've got a statue of her. It's a really beautiful statue of the Norse goddess Air. I love it to death, and um, it's wood, so I don't have to worry about it breaking. So, so I gave a libation to her. I um, I have mead. I actually bought some mead from um, Liquor Barn that's from Denmark and I was told it's a less sweet mead. I drank it and I just like, oh, this is so good. Um, so, um, I poured out a libation to her and I, I, I also petitioned uh, Apollo and Asclepios and Hygiena as well. Um, so, you have these healing deities, and I'm pretty sure the Romans encountered the goddess Air um, and everything. Mm. 
So what really pisses me off as a polytheist is this belief that if we, once again, if we get rid of the outside influences that were practiced a more pure religion. And the Romans came in contact with the Norse uh, themselves. They're called the um, Germanic tribes. Um, unlike with the Celts, they weren't, the Romans were able to defeat the Norse and integrate their Pantheon into, um, into uh, their religion. Now, if you're a Roman polytheist and you want to venerate and worship deities like Odin and Thor and Frigg and Air and Loki, you can't. It's not against the religion. But... When I posted that photo of my Roman altar, this was two years ago, I had gotten backlash from one Roman polytheist that basically accused me of being a Wiccan. And I'm like, no. And then he goes on a rant about how we, how... Roman pagans need to stop venerating Isis and venerating whatever deities or non-Roman deities that they want. And we should be venerating only Roman deities because that will make it a pure religion or to that effect. And I'm, I am reading this and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, seriously? It goes against everything your organization says you can do. <laughs> and it's the same thing with the heathens as well. I mean, if you go and you don't do it the way supposedly it was done over a thousand years ago, you are not practicing the way of the heathen. I'm thinking, oh. So going to the Celts, because the Romans had the largest impact on them than in the other culture, including the Greeks, is in two generations, the descendants of the Celtic tribes that allied themselves with Rome were thoroughly Romanized. They had a lalarum. Um, they venerated um, they venerated a hybrid of Celtic Roman deities, which if you go into like in like Britain, you will see like um, was it um, Solus Minerva? I actually do have a Solus um, card, but she did not have one for Solus Minerva, which I do need to email her and say she needs to make one. <clears throat> um, at Bath, England, uh, you had this joining or this hybrid of um, of Celtic and Roman deities that were actually um, um, joined. So, if you're practicing a Celtic Roman form of polytheism, that is, I hate to burst people's bubbles, but that is historically accurate. Um, if you're practicing a Celtic religion and you want to do it without the Roman influence, then you don't have statues. Um, yeah, you don't have statues. If you are, if you have statues, you're not practicing a pre-Roman religion. You're practicing a Celto, Celtic Roman religion or a Roman religion or whatever. Um, but that is a thing that really fucking pisses me off. And, you know, and then if you go and look at uh, how one culture can influence another culture, it's always the dominant culture or the culture that seems to have more stuff um, that always influences another culture. For example, is you cannot tell me... Please do not try to convince me 
that the Norse people were not influenced by the Romans in certain aspects. And I, trade of ideas will happen. It's inevitable. It's not cultural appropriation. It's just life. Um, I, I understand the whole thing about cultural appropriation, and I do agree that it's wrong. But if you're looking at it from a from a historical perspective, like the the Romans were were a huge influence on the Celts. They they I mean their influence was so strong when they supplanted uh, the culture, it kind of blended because that's just. Um, so yeah, the only way we could say pure Celtic culture was in Ireland because the Romans only did like little trading ports or something like that. Uh, they didn't actually go into Ireland. Um, but yeah, so, so. When we're talking about, when we're talking about uh, <clears throat> Roman religion, when we're talking about its influence on the Celts, on its attempted influence on the Norse, when we talk about the Celts' encounter with the Greeks and with the Egyptians, um, and later on how Rome would shape their view of statuary and things like that. It's a pretty interesting time. But if you are practicing a religion or you're practicing a polytheistic uh, path that very little has been written down about about the, about their um, about their about them as a people, about, or especially if nothing has been written about um, household worship, like, okay, what did the average Norse person or average Celtic household have? At, I mean, did they have shrines like the, uh, like the Romans or like the Greeks or like the Egyptians? And you'll notice in, like, cultures like Greece and Egypt and Rome, they all had household shrines. If you see three cultures with household shrines, or you see a culture far away with a household shrine, this is something that is not too far-fetched on the Celts and the Norse. Um, which is why in modern day uh, revival of these polytheistic uh, practices um, you'll have uh, in the Norse culture you will have or the Norse, Norse polytheism you'll have like a shrine to the household spirits um, and you will have or you will yeah you'll have a, a shrine to household spirits or you may have a shrine to the ancestors. Uh, there's a shop called the uh, Magical Druid that actually sells um, these little, they're made of wood, which I love, um, but they're like, they're, I think they're like three or four skulls that are carved into it and it's supposed to represent your ancestors. And you can set up a little mini shrine to them and you can like pour out like water or mead or wine or whatever to the household to your ancestors and you can venerate your ancestors if that's the only thing that you're doing in your polytheistic practice um, and then of course outside would be like the big statues and stuff like that which I thought was interesting um, uh, there's actually a video I saw a couple years ago Celtic Reconstructionism they had these big old freaking statues that don't look like they're people or they're like gods, but there's stuff being burned for them. 
uh, which I thought was interesting. Um, and then there's this whole thing about animal sacrifice and, and stuff like that. Like, oh yeah, we don't, we don't do that stuff. And then you have some guy that's posted on Facebook, for five years, the goddess Athena has allowed us to take one of her children to feed us for the winter. Um, which I thought, which I thought was really cool. Um, and then of course you got in the Norse tradition, you got some Nor Norse heathens that will sacrifice a, a bull, not a bull, sorry, a boar or, or a pig to the gods and people go, oh no, we don't do that. Um, or to the Celts, they'll, they'll sacrifice some rabbits or something like that. No, we don't do that. I know I'm going way off topic with that, but it's interesting. It's interesting when people go, when people return, like, not all the time, but like, they'll do, like, animal sacrifice. Like, over in Russia, the Mare people, they do animal sacrifice. And, and they don't give a shit if you don't like that. Um, but yeah, I know I'm going way off topic. I I'm going to do a whole video about animal sacrifice uh, in the next video. i got to go and get something to drink. My throat's like, I need something to drink. Uh, <laughs> that type of thing. But yeah, so it, it is interesting um, if you go and look at these, um, you know, these cultures, especially the Mari, um, you know, um, and a lot of these other cultures that are or are or was polytheistic, they have like similarities in certain things. So if you're practicing a Celtic or a heathen religion and you don't know if they had household shrines, just go off the deep end and come to the conclusion they did. Alright, so I'm going to let you guys go. Hope you guys have a really, really great uh, Friday. Um, I'm having a blast. I'm going to make more tea light candles today um, and everything. And so, uh, yeah, uh, these are these are actually going to be for the Norse because it's the, it's the pagan market and I have candles for all. So, um, um, oh, before I go, I want to say that the little, the boxes that I purchased for the travel shrines, they fit. Everything that I, is going to go in there, they fit, which is basically just going to be an incense burner, um, a couple of uh, incense cones. Uh, you do have the option of an LED candle if I've got college people that are polytheist or pagan. You know, not everybody considers pagan to be a slur. Um, so if you want an LED candle, I will put one in instead of an actual candle. But, um, yeah. Uh, I'm also going to give you guys an option. If you're in a, um, if you're in a, like a dorm and you can't have incense, um, I can put a little bag of potpourri in there. So... If you want that, um, I'll make sure it's the good smelling one. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> so uh, there's a lot. There's like two options. You can have the potpourri or the incense, or you can have the LED candle or the actual candle. And uh, yeah, so um, I will see you guys around. Until next time, may be happy, healthy, most importantly, be safe, and hail to the gods. Bye.